Hi guys, welcome to another art vlog. I was so excited to film this since I had just gotten out of my art block, which had to be the longest break from art that I ever had. With that, I wanted to start off with something small, so my first project in this vlog is painting the sculpture that I had made a few months back. I actually followed a short and simple tutorial online to make this, because sometimes I'm just not in the mood to take on something that is creatively challenging, I just want to make something for the sake of making it, instead of trying to come up with something entirely new. And honestly, copying someone else's work sometimes is the best way to get out of a creative slump. Afterwards, my mom and I went out to grab lunch and chill at a Starbucks nearby. For my next artwork, I wanted to draw something from Howl's Moving Castle, but in my own style. By the way, I think I never really clarified this, but I found my art style because of Percy Jackson. I was just trying to find fan art of the books and I came across this artist called Birchbug, and 10 year old me was completely captivated by her art style. I'll put some examples on the screen here. She just has the ability to put anything and everything to her art style without losing their significant features. And ever since then, I just want to draw people the way she did. After sipping on our caramel macchiatos, we went to CN Square. It's a big art store nearby and it has everything I could possibly need for my art. And actually, I haven't found a place that sells such a big collection of Copic markers like CN Square does. And that's why it's my go-to stationery store. The next day, I continued working on the house moving castle artwork. After finishing the sketch, I went on to do the line work, which is always the most terrifying part of my drawings. I'm always one wrong stroke away from being utterly upset. And filming while doing line work is so much harder than one would think, and I'm pretty sure I'm holding my breath in most of these clips. Now that the line work was done, I went on to probably the most fun part of everything, which was putting in the colors. I always use Copic markers, they're the best, that's probably why they're so pricey. When my strokes overlap, they seldom create a really uneven look on the drawing, which is usually my main problem with other markers. I only got to watch Howl's Moving Castle earlier this year for the first time ever. And the only regret I have after watching it is how I didn't watch it sooner. The story touches on various topics such as the damages caused by wars, the beauty of growing old, and how we should avoid being superficial. Not to mention how the music is just top notch. I really got out of my art slump when I saw all the beautiful fan art on Pinterest. My art block lasted for about 10 months mainly because I needed to focus on academics, but also because I just didn't feel like it. And before that, I had been drawing non-stop for a while, that I practically used up all of my energy and love for art, that I was just bound to fall out of it and remain artistically stagnant. By the way, I'm so happy with this shot. It was golden hour and the sunlight was hitting my sketchbook just right. You can see everything so clearly here. 
I'm gonna take notes and remember to film my next art vlog during golden hour. Right after I finished drawing, I started my next project which was an acrylic painting. I got this canvas as a gift from Joanna which was so sweet of her since she remembered how I said in my previous art vlog that I wanted to work on a bigger canvas. So shout out to Joanna, all my homies love Joanna. With a bigger canvas, I wanted to work on a portrait but not like the most realistic one like those made during the renaissance or something. And at that point, I had enough creative juice and I wanted to make something entirely on my own. So that's how the idea of painting this girl was born. I'm gonna be honest, I just love painting and drawing women more. Women really are my muse, from the hair to the eyes to the lips. It's just always a fun adventure to draw a girl. I don't know how to explain it, but maybe it stems from the fact that I am a girl myself. The next day, Afra and I met up for our long-awaited sushi feast. I swear, Genki Sushi is like our third home, coming right after Starbucks. As someone who loves being home alone, I tend to forget that I also like going out sometime, especially when I'm with people like Afra who aren't draining and just like a chill. So I really appreciate it when people reach out to me and remind me that hanging out is a thing. So shout out to Afra again, all my homies love Afra too. After playing with George, I decided to work on my nails. Since it's Halloween season, I obviously needed a little spookiness to my nails. I'm just a woman of culture. Nail art is so difficult though, my eyes often go a little crazy afterwards. But at the end of the day, it's just so worth it, especially when other people notice it. I like drawing all of my designs on my own rather than using stickers because it's all about the process for me. And I love surprising people by telling them that I drew on my nails instead of sticking on designs. Put on my favorite sweater and say goodbye to summer. I keep on forgetting times learn how to fly. And before I know it, it passes my by. The next day, I returned to my acrylic painting. In this painting, I wanted to show a tinge of sadness, innocence, and curiosity. I'm 19, but I still feel like an 11-year-old being pushed into the pits of adulthood. And I just wanted to show the sadness of letting your childhood go and the cruelty of being forced to grow up. It's a weird feeling, but whenever I am experiencing something really incredible, I kind of ruined the moment by being aware of the fact that this too shall pass. And the second the moment stops, it turns into a memory that you can never replicate. And that feeling is what I wanted to capture in this painting. Something like foreshadowing nostalgia. After finishing the acrylic painting, I felt like doing some junk journaling. I think I kind of established that this scrapbook is purely for junk journaling with lyrics and poems that I get inspiration from. I didn't realize how important lyrics, poems, and just words in general were. And I truly envy people who can easily sum up complex feelings with simple analogies and just sentences. 
I'm looking at you, Taylor Swift. So, yes, you guessed it. This journal spread is dedicated to intimate Taylor Swift lyrics that I can never get tired of. And since autumn is right around the corner, I wanted to incorporate her most iconic autumn song ever, which is All Too Well. I also wanted to include, in my opinion, one of her most underrated songs of all time, which is Clean from her 1989 album. I feel like the song is super flexible and applicable to many different situations, and it doesn't have to be about romantic relationships. And that's one thing I love about Taylor Swift. She has a song for literally every situation, even going as far as covering up a murder. Anyways, talented queen. So here is the final product of this vlog. I hope you guys enjoyed watching the creative process behind my artwork. Remember to leave a like, share the video, and subscribe. Bye bye!